Previously, we have characterized um, the two longitudinal modes of motion, the fugoid mode and the short period mode, through the fourth order differential equation of the longitudinal motion. So now, in this part, we want to approximate each mode of motion in state space. In other words, we want to find the 2 degree of freedom approximation for fugoid mode and a 2 degree of freedom approximation for short period mode. Um, the approximate equations would essentially give us more insights on the stability parameters and derivatives that influence uh, the motion. Here, we will write the 2 degree of freedom uh, fugoid or long period approximation. We start by looking at the 3 degree of freedom longitudinal equation um, and we'll derive our approximate equation from that. For fugoid approximation, we assume that the motion occurs at um, constant angle of attack. We have discussed previously that fugoid mode of motion consists of significant variations between the pitch attitude theta and the airspeed while the angle of attack remain constant. So if we assume that the angle of attack is constant, then the change in the angle of attack is zero. Um, the change in the force in z-axis, delta w, is influenced by the change in the angle of attack um, uh, by this equation. So by this equation, if the change, change in the angle of attack is zero, then the change in the z-force is also zero. So in the longitudinal equation of motion, we neglect the z-force equation, um, delta w, and we also neglect the pitching moment equation, delta q. Um, the time rate of change of the pitch attitude can be related to the change in the z-force axis by this equation. So for fulgoid approximate, we only use the airspeed, and the pitch attitude theta. So with that, uh, we can approximate the motion using this equation here. Uh, it is written in state space and you can see that this is a much simpler second order equation represented by a 2 by 2 state matrix. From the fulgoid state vector, um, or, or full, actually fulgoid state matrix A, we can analyze its dynamic stability by computing the open loop eigenvalues, um, also by computing the damping ratio and natural frequency. To compute the eigenvalues and find the characteristic equation, we set this determinant to zero. So in this characteristic equation, um, from here, we can solve the quadratic equation for the eigenvalues. Uh, we can also compare the equation with a general second order characteristic equation where we can find that the natural frequency is described by this parameter and the damping ratio is described by this parameter. Note that they are only functions of the longitudinal stability derivative, the airspeed and the gravity. Now let's analyze the information that we have a little further. From, from your textbook, we uh, the empirical equations for computing the stability derivatives are given um, as these, and they are functions of the aerodynamic coefficient. So then we can redefine the approximation of the damping ratio and natural frequency of the fugoid mode in terms of the airspeed and the aerodynamic lift and drag. So let's take a look at the natural frequency of the fugoid mode here. Uh, this equation implies that the natural frequency is inversely proportional to the forward velocity. So this means that at higher air speed, it will have less frequency or less oscillation. Now let's take a look at the damping ratio. This equation implies that the fugoid damping ratio is inversely proportional to the lift to drag ratio L over D. Um, so this lift to drag ratio is also called the aerodynamic efficiency. Um, an airplane that's, that has high L over D ratio produces a large amount of lift with only a small amount of drag. So this means that the aircraft, if it has high L over D ratio, it can carry more payload uh, because it has higher lift, uh, it uses less fuel because it produces low drag, uh, 
so this aircraft can go for a longer time over a longer distance. However, from this equation, we can see that airplanes with high LOD ratio may have poor fugoid damping, meaning it may take longer for the aircraft to return to trim without any intervention from the pilot over um, or the flight control system. So in this case, um, precise control of speed become difficult. So the aircraft actually would require some automatic stabilization system to augment or to provide the proper damping characteristics. So now let's derive the 2 degree of freedom short period approximation now. <clears throat> and, and we start by taking a look at the same longitudinal equation of motion. So for short period mode, we have discussed that this motion occurs at fairly constant airspeed, but there's variations in the angle of attack and the pitch attitude. So to approximate the short period mode, we assume that um, the airspeed is constant, therefore the change in the airspeed is zero. So we drop that term um, in the equation. We also drop the uh, x force uh, equation because this force is negligible if the airspeed is constant. So by that, we can approximate the short period mode uh, using only the z force and the pitching moment equations that we extracted from the 3 degree freedom longitudinal equation. Um, uh, since the short period mode is seen as a variation of the angle of attack and the pitch attitude, we actually can rewrite this 2 degree freedom um, approximation um, well we actually can rewrite this 2 degree freedom approximation in terms of the angle of attack instead of the z-force uh, and we use this equation to relate the change in the angle of attack with the change in the z-force. Um, so with that change of variable, uh, the short period is now approximated by this second order system. And it is a function of the angle of attack and the pitch rate. Okay, so from the approximate equation, uh, we can analyze the short period dynamic characteristic by um, computing its eigenvalues. Uh, finding its characteristic um, equation and compare that with a general second order characteristic equation, which then would give us an equation that would determine its natural frequency and the damping ratio. Uh, note that the longitudinal stability derivatives, um, these ones, are the ones that would define the aircraft's motion characteristic. Also, notice that if we neglect the contribution uh, from the vertical motion, meaning if we drop the z alpha term here and here, um, then the natural frequency and damping ratio approximations are identical to that of a pure pitching motion, which we have talked about in the first part of the lecture. So to sum up, um, in this part of the lecture, we have derived the approximation for fugoid, and we have derived the approximation for short period mode. And this table summarizes the characteristics of both full void and short, short period. Um, so now we know that the dynamic characteristics of the airplane's longitudinal motion are influenced by these stability derivatives that appear in these approximate equations. Uh, note that these equations are only approximate. Therefore, uh, they might not be very accurately or precisely describe the airplane's motion. Remember when we derive these approximate equations, we make some assumptions and neglect some parameters to simplify the big longitudinal equation of motion. So through this simplification process, we might lose some information on the actual dynamic characteristics of the aircraft. Um, so which is why with whatever values we get from our analysis here, we treat them as only the approximate characteristics, but not the real characteristic of the aircraft motion.